Hey, Don Copeland here once again with the Shimuto 661 UF, and today we're going to be printing on poker chips, but we're going to do a little, something else that's a little bit cool as well. Uh, you know, we don't want to just try to sell you something, we want to teach you something as well. So we're going to show you what we've done here is this design, and we're only doing 15 of them, we could fill the bed with them. So what we've done is we didn't have a jig for these, and um, didn't want to just lay them on the bed and because I want to try to orient them so they're all directed the same so the numbers and everything are going the same. Kind of a pain when you do them on a sticky mat because they get stuck and they're hard to pick up and turn. What we've done is literally we've created our own jig. All right, This jig is actually made out of, as you can see, it's made out of a couple layers, multiple layers of ink just like we would do for a texture or for ADA braille type of printing. and. That way we can lay the chips in there. They can turn because they're laying on this. This is actually a piece of clear removable vinyl that I kept the backing on, all right? And so we've set that up so that we can now print onto these. When we're done, we take this off, we throw the jig away. Not a big deal, not a lot of waste. There was 31 cents worth of ink in the 15. So there was only about two cents a piece for each of the jig positions as well. So we're gonna go ahead and print these six, 15 chips up. A minute here, see, let you show how it goes. We'll show you real quickly how we set this up. I mentioned uh, earlier that we actually printed our jig for this, something we don't do a lot of, so we uh, wanted to just be able to quickly have something that will consistently position our item, make it easy to load and unload them, and then uh, we can discard it, not a lot of expense associated with it. So I made these circles, you see we zoom in here, so I made these circles here, they're about a tenth of an inch thick, I made them out of clear, we're going to use that to do a build up, very much so like we would do a braille or ADA type of build up, so what I've done set up 15 of them here. I'm going to take those and I'll print them over to the compress rep and I'm going to print them to our texture uh, queue. All right, see our texture and gumming queue. And they're actually sitting over here in the rip already. And you can see they're built up right there. That's going to build up a nice high wall for us that we can drop our poker chips right into. Then we have a secondary layer. Turn off that layer, secondary layer is actually our artwork, which we want to print for graphics right there. It's the artwork we're going to print. This is going on to colored poker chips. I've got three different colors of poker chips, so I'm going to make sure I put a white underbase on it. This is a Photoshop file, so we want to make sure that we tell it when we go to print, grab those layers there, make sure they're selected to print over here. Tell it to print with an underbase, because if we don't, what it's going to do is going to give us a square underbase underneath of that, not just underneath of the graphic itself. So I'm going to send that over instead of the texture and doming, I want to send that over to clear auto clear and auto white. Click OK. It's going to generate that underbase for us. We come over here to the auto white and clear. I'm going to select to print this with an auto white and I'm going to print it with a just a fine finish. So I'm going to auto white fine. Right here, auto white, CMYK fine, so like that. I'm going to rip that for us as well. It costs 31 cents to generate our jig. So about two cents for each one of the positions that we have, the 15 positions. That's a one-time investment. And then this is going to cost 15 cents, a little over 50 cents, about a penny for each one of these poker chips to print. We'll go ahead and send those over and we'll have those printed on top of the chips. You'll notice as this loads up, as it starts to hit the material, it's actually going to lower the bed. You hear that it's lowering the bed, so now the print head is set to the right height. It's going to start printing. It's going to lay down the white layer, followed by the color layer, and one pass as it goes through the machine. All right, here we go. They're done. Nice. Look at that. Did 15 of them up. I mean, I haven't even done the numbers on this. We probably could get three more across, be eight. We could probably get seven. We could easily put 80 or 100 of these chips on this 
but with this type of spacing, I would probably tighten it up if I was worrying about production or anything like that. But this is a nice thing. A couple things here. Nice, nice idea for a fundraiser. You could use these as a fundraiser as a casino night. Either have dollar values on these, or you could use these for like drink coupons or anything like that. Um, number one. Number two, we created our own jig. Folks, you know, if you don't have a jig and you've got a, a unique type of item you want to try to print on, and it's something you're just going to be a one-time, one-and-done, one-shot. I do this a lot myself when I'm doing custom samples here. You can just print out a custom jig here, just using your, your standard mode and the printer that we use for printing out Braille or ADA or other type of textures and easily put it on here. I printed it onto this simply because I want to make it easier to take up. One. Number two, I needed to be able to turn these chips to get them oriented. And if you try to do that when they're on the stickies, it's not so easy. The mat itself is pretty sticky. All right, that's it. One more way to make money with using your, your Muto, either the 461 or the 661 Expert Jets, plus a creative way to actually generate things that, you know, it's jigs, if you don't have a laser or something like that you want to create, you can take an oddball shape, print it out here as an outline, and guess what? You got your own jig. I'm Don Copeland with the Muto 661.